Now that we have our Nux project created and our content module plugged in, let's start creating the basic elements of our documentation site. Referring to docs.cleaver.io, the main pieces of what we'll create for our documentation site is a header, a left side rail, and a main content area. In this video, we're gonna concentrate on creating the header and we're gonna make it desktop friendly in this video. In a future video, we'll do one on how to create a mobile friendly header. Alrighty, let's open up our code. But before I do, let's go back to this tab and then see what we're changing. In Nux, there's gonna be a layout page that we're gonna to wanna to edit. And then within that layout page, we're gonna add a component for the header. In this current page, Basically what Nux defaults with is a layout page, and then within that layout page, it points to the content of a page that we'll see in the directory structure. Well, now let's go to our code. Right here in our directory structure, the first thing that we're gonna wanna look at is under layouts. So layouts has the default view, and it's pretty simple. It's just some CSS for the most part, and then the top template that you see right here has Nuxt, which is a tag that points to the page section and we'll render the index.view. So this is the actual content that currently displays on the page, which really just says my docs and has the Nux logo. What we'll do first is go back to the default.view, and then we're gonna add a header within this section. So let's create another component for a header, and we'll call this main header. Avoid calling this just header because that will conflict with other standard tags let's create that new component within the component section. So we'll expand that and we see that currently there's a component for the logo. Let's take a look at that real quick. Very simple, just an SVG and then some styling tags. Let's now add a file under components and then we'll call that new file main header, as we said before, that view. And that was just asking me if I wanna add it to my Git. Well, of course I do. All right, well, let's minimize that left row right there and then just see what we're working with. And check that out, it's a blank slate. I have a little bit of starter code that I'll just paste in here. So far, it's really just simple. We have a template with a div in there, which is gonna be our main container. And I'm gonna have our header fixed to the top of the page. If you want your header to scroll with the page, just take off the fixed. This is all standard Tailwind CSS. If you'd like to refine the styling just a little bit more, Go ahead and go to tellwincss.com and take a look at their documentation section. It is awesome. And in fact, uh, I use that as inspiration for docs.cleaver.io, which was pretty easy because I actually use Tellwin UI for a lot of the components that I use with docs.cleaver.io. And if you have a Tellwin UI account, feel free to use that. I'm gonna try to avoid Tellwin UI as much as possible. Uh, because that does have a license associated to it and I want this to be just generic Tailwind CSS that you guys will be able to use, no worries. But again, go to tailwindcss.com, look at their documentation. They have great documentation and chances are if you can think it, well, they're gonna show you how to do it. All right, as I said, this is just the main container up here. It's gonna be fixed to the very top of the page. And within this container, we're gonna have a couple elements and let's just write some comments for now, actually, for the different sections that we're gonna have. At some point, we're gonna come back here and make this a little more mobile friendly. So if you scale down the width of the page, it will be more mobile friendly, which means that we'll probably remove some stuff and expose some other things. Think of the little hamburger menu icon that is exposed in the mobile view. We'll probably come back here and then create that and only have it visible for the lower screen widths. For now, we're just gonna focus on the desktop view of this. Let's put our to-do item here. To-do, add mobile-friendly header. And we'll come back to that in a different episode. The next area, we're gonna have a div section. And then within that, we're gonna have some of the elements of the page. We're gonna have our logo. We're gonna have a search area. And then on the far right is icons that you'll be able to add. In this case, it's just a link to our login page for cleaver.io. All right, so let's keep this in mind and then code it out. Let's focus on creating the following three things, the logo, the search bar, and the icons that appear on the far right of the header. And let's write it in real quick. So logo, 
And then I'll just copy this. And then we'll do the search. And then the icons. Since Nux already comes default with a local component, let's go ahead and just dump that in. For search, we're not going to create the whole search component at this time. So let's just go ahead and add an input box, and that will be a placeholder for now. For logo and input, we're going to put these under a common div because we're going to make them a child of the parent div, which is going to use justify between to push these items to the left side of the page and the icon to the right side of the page. So let's do that real quick. And as I mentioned, and we want the logo and the input to appear on the same row. So we're going to add flex for that. And then let's add some styles to the parent div, which I have right here. So I'll just paste that in. Okay, let's add in something for the icon. And we'll put that in a div as well. That way it goes to the right side of the page. Well, we need an icon, so let's go find one. If you like Tailwind, another person that really liked Tailwind created this pretty cool site, which is called HeroIcons.com. And it's pretty awesome because you could search through a lot of the Tailwind made icons and then just grab the SVG code. So it doesn't really matter what we put in here because it's just going to be a template. You guys could change it out and put in whatever you want. So let's go ahead and put something somewhat generic in there. Let's put in the globe. All right, let's use this one right here and copy the SVG and then go back to our code. And then we'll paste it in right there. All right, and I want to style this a little bit more. So let's go ahead and add class. And let's fill that in with some code I already have here. So add a little bit of margin on the right and keep the height and width around five. We're going to make the icon gray. So for that, you add text gray 700. And when a user hover overs it, it'll change to be a little bit darker of a gray. Let's go back to our browser and check on our progress. But before I do, I think there might actually be a little problem with the logo. Let's go ahead and check this first. And let's remove the width and the height because I think that's going to be a little too big for that area. So we'll remove that and let's go back to logo and add class equals and let's do height five, width five. So it's probably a little small for our logo, but that'll be fine for now. All right, let's save that and then go to our browser. So you see the different elements. You see the logo on the left. I'm guessing if I click in here, yep, you see the input box. It's just a little hidden right now, which for now is fine. We'll fix that later. And on the far right, you see the globe icon. And then you also see that horizontal divider. It looks like it's not exactly filling the whole width of the page. So let's go back into our code and work on our template a little more. Okay, let's head over to default.view, which is our main layout. And let's work with this bad boy a little more. And let's just add some styles to this main container div. All right, well, I don't want the, the header and the divider line to span the full width. I want it to reach a max predetermined width and get no greater than that. Let's use max width, and then let's try six extra large for that. And then to center this on the page, we'll do MX auto. Okay, cool. Let's see if that did what we want. Great, we now see the header element centered on the page, and it's at the max width. So it breaks right here and right here, and then it has a little bit of buffer on either side. All right, we laid some pretty good groundwork for our header. In the future, we'll go back in and finish out the search. And then also we'll make this mobile friendly.